When I said there should only be one source of truth, right? For the back end, you have a database, which then the back end pulls data and shows it to the front end. And the front end should generally have the same thing, but we actually have two because we have a user. So we want to make this our source of truth, but unfortunately we have to keep this around if the user types the word cow instead of 32, for example, right? So let's go back to our actual update to the value and say, let's change this to a function. We'll say, if we have some good data, then we'll show you that good data. But if it's bad, then we'll just show whatever the heck you typed, right? So we'll keep that kind of same idea. So let's change this to view Fahrenheit. And we'll change that over here too, to view Celsius. And I use the word view in, in front of the function kind of as a convention to say that this function has to do with returning HTML, returning attributes, some kind of thing, right, for a view. Say view Fahrenheit, get our model. And just like before, we'll say if our model, the Fahrenheit, in or update if our Fahrenheit field is valid, right? If it's true, then we can go ahead and actually show the Fahrenheit value. And what that is is our model dot Fahrenheit value that we've calculated to a string. So we'll say string to float, or I'm sorry, from float. Else, it's some kind of bad value whatever the user's typing, we can't show Fahrenheit because it's invalid. Whatever they try to type, it didn't parse correctly. So we'll just say the Fahrenheit field value. And we'll copy pasta coding, do the same thing for Celsius. For Celsius, view the good metric data. And if the Celsius is legit, sounds great. If it's not, that's okay. Just show what's in there. And so this doesn't care if the user typed it or whatever. This is like, look, whatever the model is at this current time, if we've got a valid field value, great. Go ahead and show the Fahrenheit data as our source of truth. Otherwise, I don't know what's going on. The user's being a goofball or they screwed up the data somehow. Just go ahead and show what's in the field and let them keep typing. So we'll hit compile here. And we've got to fix our Celsius model to return a string. It's still looking for a message. I forgot, I got to put that to a value. My bad. So whatever string these guys return back, we want to go ahead and put in the field. Thank God for the Elm compiler. All right, and so now when we type in 32, we're good. If we type in 17, we're good. Or convert the Celsius. And you can see that if it's invalid, it's not going to you know, modify either the Celsius or our field. It's going to allow us to type things and let us know that it's invalid. But if we type something good, right, like 82, then it'll convert to the Celsius. So, so far, so good. Now watch what happens when we toggle over and we type in here, 17 or zero or cow. Notice how if it's invalid, it's not going to modify in our update function. It's not going to update anything to do with Fahrenheit, right? Because it's, it's just like, I'm not, not going to do anything. But if it is good, then it'll say, oh, okay, well, the Celsius is clearly good because it's a number. We parsed it. That's what the user wants to type. So we'll go ahead and convert to Fahrenheit for it. And we'll allow you to put that in a field if you wanted to, capture it as a user input. And we'll also see the field's valid again. So it goes from either bad to good or stays good if you keep typing numbers, right? As you keep typing larger and larger numbers.